Hey everyone, this is Noel with creationeffects.com and you're watching the tutorial for doing the data mosh effect in Adobe After Effects. I'll be using the creation glitch effects template uh, from creationeffects.com. So uh, data moshing is a popular video glitch. Um, it's used in a lot of glitch art and popular music videos. And usually to create the effect, it's this long and complicated process. Well, you can get a similar effect in After Effects, uh, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. The effect is all set up for you in the Creation Glitch Effects template uh, for After Effects. So I am going to be using that, and you'll need that template to do the effect. First, um, just a brief layman's explanation of what's going on in a data mosh effect. It's a transition effect, essentially. So the whole idea behind it is you've got two shots, and rather than the first shot, uh, just cutting to the second shot, what happens is the first shot plays and then freezes, and then whatever object is moving in the second shot grabs the pixels from the first shot and kind of takes them with it. Uh, so you can see the pixels in the first shot get displaced and it kind of morphs into the second shot. And this effect isn't an exact reproduction of the real thing, but I think it does a pretty good job of recreating that look. So let's get to it. First thing I'm going to need to do is import my footage. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and File. And I've got three clips here that I'm going to bring into After Effects. And uh, the data mosh effect is just a small component of a very large template, which includes a ton of effects. So you'll have to navigate your way through a bunch of folders to find it. Um, just open up Build Your Own Glitch and then open up transition effects, then pre-comp transitions, then data mosh, and then open pre-comps. And this your footage comp is what we're looking for. I'll open that up. Um, you can just delete the layer that's in there. And uh, what we want to do is edit our clips. Um, we need two of them, and then edit them together so that they cut right here at the five second mark. So I'm going to start with this, this shot of a city, uh, just a basic pan of the Chicago skyline. It'll cut right about here. It doesn't really matter what you use for this first shot. The second shot is more important. Um, and for this example, I'm going to be using this shot of a guy running across the screen. And I'm going to scale it up just a little bit so it fits the, the frame. So uh, this shot is ideal for this effect um, for two reasons, contrast and motion. So this effect will work best if um, our second shot has contrast between the subject and everything else, or the background. Um, so you can see our subject is dark, everything else is relatively light, and we have just one main subject um, that's moving. And I realize that not all shots um, are going to be like that, and that's okay. Um, I'm going to show you an example after this uh, with a shot of a gorilla that's less than ideal. Um, the effect will still work um, no matter what, but uh, the results might be a little more chaotic or they might not um, resemble the, an authentic data mosh effect as well. But let's just do it with this shot first, and you can see uh, how the effect works. Let's have it cut right at that frame. Um, so I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to move this clip over so that it starts at that five second mark. So it'll go from here. And right at five seconds, this shot will freeze. And our runner will start to move. Um, it'll The runner will grab these pixels and take them with him as he moves across the frame. And it'll leave this trail of echoes behind him. All right, I'll close that comp. And next we want to open up the data mosh comp inside that data mosh folder. You can see there's some instructions showing, which um, we don't need that because I'm just telling you what to do. And uh, you can see some marker notes here. Step one, step two, step three. We already did step one, which was edit the two shots together. Um, step two is motion track this layer called your footage motion tracked. So to do that, we need our tracker panel, 
Um, if you don't see it, just go to Window and choose Tracker, and it'll open up this new panel here. All we need to do is set Motion Source to this layer, Your Footage Motion Tracked. And that will open up your footage in a new panel here, and you'll see this little tracker box here. And um, if you've never motion tracked footage before, that's okay. I'm going to show you what to do. Basically, we need to put this box um, over an area of high contrast that After Effects can track as it moves. Uh, so just click on the box and the inner box, not in the very center, but somewhere like here. And um, I'm going to be tracking his face. This inner box uh, represents the pixels that After Effects will be tracking. The outer box represents the search area. Um, so After Effects on each frame will search this area for this group of pixels. If your subject is moving really fast, you might need the search area to be bigger. For this shot, I'm going to leave it at the default size, and then I'm going to click Analyze Forward to let it track. And it's just going to go until the, uh, the end of the comp, which is at 12 seconds. All right, and you can see our tracking data here. Um, we can close this panel now, and that should take us back to our data mosh comp. And uh, we'll just go to some frame after five seconds. And um, let's look at our step three. Step three is adjust this matte contrast on the control layer. So let's select the control layer, and then in our Effect Controls panel, uh, and if you don't see this panel, just go to Window and choose Effect Controls. And we're going to just make some adjustments to some of these controls here. Uh, first of all, we'll need to turn on Matte Preview Mode. So just check that box, and you can see it creates this high contrast version of our footage. And um, our goal is to make our subject, or whatever is moving, whatever the main object is that is moving in your shot, we want that to be white, and we want everything else to be uh, black. And again, this isn't going to be possible most of the time, but um, you just kind of work with these controls and get it as close as you can. This looks pretty good, except we have it inverted. Um, our guy is dark, and we want him to be white. So I can click on Invert Matte, and um, this actually looks pretty good. Usually you would want to adjust this matte threshold and that would expand the white areas or uh, contract them um, so that you can get as much of your subject white as you can and the rest of it as dark as you can. Um, but I'm going to just leave this at the default. And uh, when you're done, just turn off matte preview mode. And this is ready to render. Um, you can preview this comp if you want but I want to warn you that I ran into some problems with After Effects crashing, and uh, I don't know if that's going to happen to you or not, but if it does, I'm sorry. Uh, something in here After Effects just doesn't like, but I found that if you uh, just set it to render in Adobe Media Encoder, um, I didn't have any problems when I did that. So I'm going to do that now. Just add it to Adobe Media Encoder Q. I'll delete this old one. And then you can set uh, the location on your hard drive. Uh, you can adjust your settings, your, your render settings if you want. I'm just going to let this render. All right, I've skipped ahead and uh, our clip is finished rendering. So let's have a quick look. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to After Effects. I'm going to bring that into After Effects. And I'll open up the Your Footage Comp again. And let's make this clip now the first shot in this next example. I'm going to delete all these markers. So let's have it cut right about there. And uh, we can delete these other clips. And um, we'll go back to our original clips we brought in. I'm going to bring in this gorilla clip. Let's have it start right as it starts to lift its head up. 
The clip should always start with some motion. And then I'll trim off the beginning. Um, so <clears throat> what we're going to see in this clip, there's not a lot of contrast here, uh, at least not between the foreground and the background. Um, there is motion, and that's good. So let's go ahead and motion track this. I'll close this comp so we can go back to our Datamosh comp. And uh, we want to put this at the five second mark. And in our tracker panel, we'll set motion source to your footage motion tracked. And uh, we can move this. I'm going to move it to his face. And we might need to increase the size a little bit. And then I'll hit analyze forward. All right. And you can see it did not track. We will have to adjust that box. All right, I've skipped ahead. Um, our clip is finished, so let's have a look. So now I am actually going to bring this clip back into After Effects. We've got our Your Footage comp open. I'm going to delete um, the original clips and drag in the new clip. And I'll delete all these markers. All right, I'll go to my five second mark and let's have it cut right about there. And uh, I'll go back to our original clips and I'm, this time I'm going to bring in this clip of a gorilla. Um, so this shot, I mentioned it's not ideal uh, just because it's lacking the contrast between the foreground and the background or the subject and uh, everything else. But it does have some decent motion in there. You don't want too much motion. If something moves out of frame, uh, you won't be able to track it. So it's best if your subject remains in the frame for the duration of the clip. Let's have it cut right as the gorilla starts to lift up his head. It's best if this second clip starts with some motion. Um, I'll trim off the beginning there. And I'll close your footage. And I'll make sure that I'm at the five second mark. And uh, in our tracker panel, I'll set motion source to your footage motion tracked. You can see the tracking data from our previous shot. We'll just move the tracker box. Uh, I think I want it on his face. This is, there's a lot less detail here, so we might need to make this bigger. And we'll see how that works. Let's just do analyze forward. All right, that didn't work. I'll undo. Let's try a bigger search area. Okay, so I stopped it. It started tracking all right, but then it got off course. So I'm going to go to the frame before it went off course, and I'll adjust our tracker box again. So each time the tracker box gets out of position, just go back to the frame where the problem started and adjust that box and then try again. If your subject is moving really fast, you'll want that box to be bigger. I'm just going to let this finish and skip ahead. All right, it's finished tracking, so I'm going to close that panel so that we're back in our Datamosh comp. And um, I'm going to go somewhere past the five second mark. And I'll select the control layer. And in the Effect Controls panel, I'll turn on Matte Preview Mode. And because there's not a lot of contrast between the foreground and the background, the white is kind of spread out throughout the frame, which isn't great, um, but we'll just have to work with that. We can try inverting and seeing what that looks like. Let's try a different value. All right, I skipped ahead again. Um, I think I got it uh, where I think is best keeping in mind that the white areas are the areas that are going to be moving and dragging the pixels from the from the uh, first shot. Um, if it's running slow, you can just go down to the preview resolution and set it to third or something. Um, then you can make these changes and it'll update quicker. So let's try it like this. Remember to turn off matte preview mode. So you can already see um, 
there's a lot more of this shot being affected because there was white all over. But we won't know how it'll look until it's done, so let's just give it a try. I'll send this to Adobe Media Encoder. Okay, the clip is finished rendering. Um, it takes about 15, 20 minutes or so to render the clip. Um, that's because there's an echo effect in this comp that uh, is compounded. Um, so each frame, there's a new echo, so each frame is slower than the frame before it. Um, anyway, just to warn you, it takes a while. But our clip is finished. Let's have a quick look. Here's our first shot and the gorilla. Uh, so you can see, or maybe you can't, I don't know, the difference. I think the best results come when you have clear contrast between an object that's moving and the background, but that's just my preference. So that does it. Um, I hope you enjoy the datamosh effect. I'll leave you to it, so uh, thanks for watching.